right, so in the last video when we were making our form, we used an input element here to add this submit button for our form. What I want to do real quick is I want to swap over and actually look at using the button element here uh, to fulfill this role as well and other ways that you can use uh, the button element uh, with your forms. So back over in our code editor here, I'm going to collapse the explorer just so we can uh, just only see the code here for our form. Uh, going down here to this input element, I'm just going to comment this out real quick. And now let's add a button element here. Now, unlike the input element uh, with type submit, um, that is a self-closing tag, the button element is not. Okay, so this serves a few purposes here. So the input element, when you have type submit, uh, it only allows plain text uh, as the input to its label. So we can only write the sign up here. Um, or whatever you want to put for the value to be displayed as the label text in the button as we see right here But inside the button element here you can put other HTML content inside this so you can make fancier buttons You can put an image inside of here if you wanted uh, You know different things like that. So it allows you to put full HTML content inside of this element So let's just uh, duplicate what we had before. Let's just say sign up in here as the text I'm going to save this and let's refresh our page here note that we don't see any difference as far as visually what we see here uh, but if we look at our markup here, we can see that we're using a button element. So the button element also has a type attribute. So we can also say uh, type submit. Okay. So let's save that. If we refresh here, uh, if we were to just type in some stuff here. And we hit submit or we hit the sign up button. We look at our network tab just like before. Um, it submits that information over. Uh, to the server uh, to the URL that is set in the action for our form to be processed by the server now inside of a form here If you have a button the default value of the type uh, Attribute is submit if you have a button outside of a form though. Let's put one here uh, Button outside. Okay, let's save that. Let's go back to our page refresh Okay, now we see this button here if we click this button we can see that nothing is happening. There's no network requests happening or anything like that. Uh, however, and just to prove our point here for this uh, type attribute here, let's go ahead and uh, delete that out of here so that we can see that the default is to submit. So here we are. Uh, we just have a regular button here. We can click this all we want. Nothing happens. Click sign up though. We can see that a network request is fired off. So the default type uh, for a, a button when it's inside of a form element is to submit, okay? But uh, I like being explicit, so I'll just put that back here, submit. Now you might be wondering, like, what is the use of a button not doing anything when it's just on a page and not inside of a form? Well, it comes in quite handy, actually, when you uh, learn JavaScript. You can hook into that button uh, on click event, and you can trigger your own custom logic using some JavaScript. So that comes in handy, and we'll see some stuff like that when we get into the JavaScript section. But for now, I'm going to delete this out of here and close this back up. I'll leave... Uh, our button uh, right now for submitting the form and let's look at another button so I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to uh, copy it down to the next line here and I'm going to change the type here I'm going to say reset here okay and then let's change this here to say reset form okay let's save that let's refresh our page here so now we have this reset button here so what this will do is if we have some stuff in here and we hit this we'll see that it clears out our form okay it resets all of the form input controls to their default value. Now, some folks may consider this to be a bad user experience to have a button that does uh, such an action, because especially if you have a huge form and someone types it all, you know, fills out the whole form and accidentally clicks that button, they didn't have to go back and redo everything. So, you know, in, in case, certain cases, it can be um, problematic. So, uh, or a bad experience. So, you know, use it with caution, but I just wanted to show that it is available. Now, the other thing I want to touch on real quick is so currently in our form since we're using this uh email input type here there's a built-in validation okay that runs as we've seen before in in other videos okay uh what if for example we were working on a, this is a form for a blog post okay and you wanted to have the option to you know go ahead and save a blog post or save it as draft now the difference being that save maybe runs some validations and saving as a draft doesn't okay so what you can do here is actually you can put another button uh, of type submit on the page here like this. And let's say, sa let's say save as draft here, just as an example. Okay, let's save this. And now what we want to do here is on this button, 
we want to add this property of form no validate okay now this attribute is a boolean attribute so just the attribute name being here is good enough you don't have to say form no validate equals true now if we go back to our page let's refresh our page here and let's just inspect this element here so we see there's our form no validate attribute coming uh, into play right here so now what should happen is that let's clear our network tab here and let's fill out this with uh, you know an invalid email if now what should happen is if we click the save as draft button the email validation should not run and we should get this information uh, you know posted to our uh, endpoint for uh, to our server so let's go ahead and click save as draft and indeed we see that no error was raised uh, for validation the network request happened and the invalid email was sent over okay so if you ever need to build some save as draft functionality uh, this is a really easy way to do it okay you just add another button Put that form to validate attribute on it and then uh it's, you know something like in rails when you post to differentiate on your server on this button we could have uh, a name attribute okay so we we'll say name and we'll just say uh draft in this case okay let's go back to our page and refresh here now again looking at our form here uh it's still the same we just have that name attribute okay which again uh you should consider the name attribute to be required as we discussed in the previous video so we really should probably have it on our um input uh type submit here as well so we can go back and add that in uh, let's do that now real quick let's go up here and let's just say uh name oops name equals submit okay let's refresh again okay great we've got that there and actually let's go ahead and add that uh, here as well just for the future uh, and we can say submit all right refreshing one more time all of our ways to submit our form now have a name attribute on it and now what I wanted to show you here to finish this kind of out uh, as a simple way to build you know save and draft whatever modes for uh, you know a blog post or something if we were to input some invalid data here remember this email field should run a validate the uh, built-in validation that it has but if we do save as draft here let's go to our network tab let's clear this out let's hit the button remember this has a no form no validate attribute on it so that validation does not run the request happens and then if we look through uh, the request data that was sent we see this draft parameter uh, gets sent over as well. So you could use that, you know, say in your Rails app and look for, you know, params draft or something. And if that's present, then you can know to go ahead and let's save this uh, to our database, you know, not uh, in publish mode. If it was a blog post or something like that, we'll save it as draft. Otherwise, if we were to hit, you know, I know our button says sign up here, but if it was published or save or whatever, we would go ahead and not save this draft and just go ahead and publish immediately. The last thing I want to cover here is a minute ago, you know, we talked about when you have a button element inside of a form, the default uh, type is submit. So if it's inside a form and you hit that button, it'll go ahead and submit that form. That doesn't have to be the case. And also you can override where the form submits to uh, using a button element. So for example, you can have a button element outside of a form that when you click it, it'll submit that form. But the way to do that is that the, the button that you set up, you need to use this form attribute here. And then the value for that form attribute needs to match the ID given to the form. Okay, so let's let's try a quick example here. So over on our form, let's add an ID attribute and let's just say sign up. Okay, and now let's take, uh, let's get rid of this button here and let's put a button outside here. So we'll say button and then we'll say form equals sign up. Okay, just like that. And then we'll just give it some text of post sign up form. So now let's go back to our page, reload it. Here's that uh, post sign up form button. Again, remember it is outside of our form. Here's our whole form element. It is collapsed right now. Uh, if we expand it, then we can see all the controls, uh, all the markup for the controls inside of it. But I'll collapse it so we can clearly see that that button is outside of the form, but it is linked to the form via the form attribute here it has the value matching the id we gave to the form if we were to put in some information here okay and now let's look at our network tab let's clear it out if we now click this button we'll see that indeed it does go ahead and submit that form right and there's all the information we typed into the form controls being submitted over to the uh, form action that we have set up and speaking of the form action you can change where it submits to also by using the form action property so right here you could set on that button that we have outside of the form you could set form action equal to a whole completely different url 
than what the actual form has on its action attribute. And when you click the button, the form will go over there instead. Okay. So this is another way that you could use if you have our if I, our published and draft published and draft uh, blog post scenario. Instead of doing what we did, adding using the name to look in the parameters and see if that name's there, you could just have it submit over to a draft blog post controller if you, in your Rails app. You know, and the regular one could be a published uh, blog post controller. You know, you can handle it that way too. So you can use form action uh, on a button element. You can use that attribute to submit the form somewhere different than where it would normally go to. Also, you can change the form method too. Um, so you could, if the form by is actually a post, but the button you want it to trigger to get you can do that or vice versa okay so it's up to you but these are some of the attributes i wanted to show off and again there's our form to validate uh these are things that um i think people eventually encounter but don't necessarily know a lot of the time that they can do uh right out the gate so i wanted to make sure to point those out to you all right so we're going to wrap this video up here on form buttons okay some cool stuff here so definitely dive in and explore that a little bit more in the next video we're going to look at some more form controls and then how we can submit some nested data after that so i will see you there